Hi, I'm Florian and I made Circular O. Circular O has a powerful level editor which has been used to make many amazing levels. It's quite intuitive, but sometimes it can still be a bit confusing when you first start using it. Therefore, I wanted to make a quick tutorial to explain the main functions of the editor. You can open the editor by clicking on the level editor button in the main menu. Then you will see this. By default, your level will be divided into seven segments, uh, just like most circular levels. The player will start in the first segment and go and grow the level with collectibles. On the top left are the main tools and objects you can use to create your level. On the top right is another toolbar, uh, which allows you to save your level, share it and things like that. Uh, to be able to play your level, you will always need to place down a player object. You can do that by pressing the Create Progress Elements button and then the Start, uh, choosing the Start element. Place the start in your level. Then you can already test the Play button and check out your level. It can be fun to just go around circle a few times like this, but it will probably soon get boring. So let's make this level more interesting. Go back to the editor and add some more collectibles. By default, collectibles are used to grow the level. I'll explain some more about collectibles later. With some collectibles, you can technically create a complete level, but it's still really boring. We will also need to place some more objects in the level. There's a good selection of solid objects you can place in your level. First up are the fixed circle and fixed rectangle. Simply click and drag to create these. After you created an object, you can always drag to move it around as well. Just click on an object to select it. You can then resize it with its handles. The rectangle can be rotated using its black handle as well. When you select an object, you also notice an extra toolbar in the bottom left. Many object types have extra properties you can set with the properties button. For example, the fixed circle can attract other objects if you want, and can be, which can be used to make levels with planet gravity. Also in the toolbar is a coordinates button. This is useful if you want to make sure two objects are properly aligned to each other, or if you need to make very precise adjustments to an object's position. There's also a duplicate button and a destroy button. Next to the circle and rectangle, there's also the fixed triangle, line, arc and curve. The exact way you place down these objects differs per object, but you'll figure that out soon enough. One thing that's useful to mention if you're on mobile, sometimes you want to get an object in a precise place, but can't see what you're doing because your finger is in the way. In this case, just place the object and start dragging the handle of the object to the size or move it. Then, place down another finger on your screen and lift the original finger you press the handle with. You can now easily see what you're doing. The last two objects in the solid objects toolbar are the growing circle and rectangle. These will grow as the level grows. After the solid object, it's time for some movement. There are three moving objects you can place in your level, the circle, rectangle and triangle. For each object, uh, you can also choose a density, which affects how heavy the object is, as well as the damping, which affects how quickly the object slows down after movement. For the rectangle and triangle, you can also disable their rotation. There's also a super glue uh, option, uh, which can be used to create more complex objects if you want, by gluing other objects together. Using just these objects, you can already make some pretty nice levels, but of course there's more. If you want to create a more complex level, the connections and special objects category is for you. There are four types of connections in this category. The rope is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, just connect two objects together and you will create a rope between them. For example, we can create a rope between a solid object and a movable object, or a rope within uh, between two movable objects. You can also drag the endpoints to make the objects connect in a different place. And the rope can also be used for decorative purposes. Just create a rope between two solid objects and then uh, drag it anywhere to create a line in your level. The pulley connection can be used to connect two objects with a pulley. 
If you want to make sure the pulley starts balanced, like for these two very different objects here, you can check out the properties for the pulley as it has uh, some options to ensure balance at the start of the level. For example, by changing the ratio, changing the radius of these circles or changing their density. You can also enable free positioning, uh, which means that you can create a pulley that isn't vertical, for example. The hinge connection can be used to create hinges. The object you start dragging for will determine the hinge position by default, but you can move it. Uh, note that by default the hinge connection won't be visible in the level and the objects you connect can't, be, uh, can't collide with each other. If you do want either of those things, just check out the properties of the hinge connection and you will be able to change these options. The hinge connection is also useful to create wheels. Simply uh, create a basic vehicle shape You can also uh, get the wheels to have a wheel image and then start dragging hinges uh, from the wheels to the body of the vehicle. The prismatic slash slider connection is a bit more advanced, but the basic use of it is to make sure an object can only move along one line. For example, in this case, uh, this an uh, elevator piece can only move diagonally upward. It can also very nicely be combined with a pulley connection to make sure uh, the pulley parts can only move along a single line, for example, up and down. If you connect any connection to the player's start position, that works as well. And if you connect them to a collectible, the connection will be attached to the player as soon as the collectible is collected. Next in the connections and special objects, we have the rotatable rectangle and circle, which are pretty self-explanatory. The springy rectangle is a rectangle with a circle in the middle. The circle represents the point the rectangle rotates around, and the rectangle will always try to spring back to its original rotation. If you combine it with a heavy movable, It can be used to make a pretty good trampoline. However, a trampoline like this could only be used once. Fortunately, we have the ball generator and box generator, which can be used to uh, keep spawning balls or boxes on a timer, uh, which will automatically disappear again after a while. You can uh, also set up some basic settings for this. Uh, and set up their timing and much more. The last object in this category is the portal. When the player touches the portal, they will be teleported to the destination you choose. You can also choose a minimum time. Uh, the player must touch the portal before they are teleported. Portals are useful to prevent soft locks and simply to bring the player to another location. Sometimes they can also be used as obstacles the player must avoid. However, uh, they do not show where they lead. So please make sure it's clear to the player whether they should use a portal or avoid it. The final category of level objects are progress elements. You've already seen the player and the normal collectible. The rest of these objects are more advanced types of collectible. Each collectible has two variants, one which is collected when the player touches it and one which is collected when another object touches it. There is of course a normal collectible in both types and uh, then there's a collectible that changes gravity, changes the player size, destroys all connections to the player, and a collectible that changes player speed. Finally, there's a special collectible. This collectible can affect other objects in your level. It can disable generators, break ropes, change which object the camera follows, and more. 
To use it, first place down the collectible and then use the Add Special Connection button and connect it to another object. In some cases you have multiple choices on what the special connection should do. For example, when you create a special connection to the ball generator, you can turn it off on or off, generate a ball now and more. The special collectible can do a lot of things and may take some experimentation to fully figure out. I will put a full list of what it can do as of the current game version on screen now. One common use case for the special collectible is to create a solid block that can be removed later in the level. To set this up, create a box generator and set the density to zero, which is solid. Uh, and also set it up to never disappear and set the time between generations to generate only once. Then create a destroy spawned objects connection from a special collectible. To create the object again, use the generate one if none exists rule. Each collectible also has some properties in common. First, there's the appear at level segment and part of this level segment properties. These are useful if you want collectibles that don't grow the level or collectibles that don't show up right away. For example, in this case, we uh, make sure you need to collect two collectibles before the level grows. And in this instance, uh, we can make sure the second collectible only shows up at the second segment. In the advanced settings, you can also set up collectibles to be a trigger. Triggers don't grow the level and can be activated multiple times. You can also change the sound effect the collectible has. One final tool that's useful to mention is the box select option. Using this tool you can easily select multiple objects in your level. Uh, after that you can easily move them together. Uh, and even duplicate them. These were all the main tools you can use to create your level. Let's now quickly go over the right toolbar. There's an undo button, a button to create a new level, a button to load the level you've saved, and a button to save your level. Your level will be automatically saved regularly, but using the save button you can give it a file name so it's not overwritten if you start working on a new level. Next to, that, next to that is the button to share your level with the circular community and next to that is the settings button. In the level settings screen you can change the starting gravity, uh, change the color of your level and change the number of segments which your level has. You can also use the start full button to make the level work as one single segment. You can also change the music your level uses from among the standard music tracks the game has. The last two buttons are of course a button to playtest your level and a button to go back to the main menu. Finally, I want to give a few quick tips for making good level. Of course, feel free to use these tips or not. I greatly prefer levels that avoid soft locks. A soft lock means player can get stuck in a way that they have to restart the level. This can be really frustrating, especially if the player already overcame some challenging obstacles. Often, portals are a useful tool to avoid soft locks. For example, place a portal in the place where the player would end up if they miss a jump and let them try to jump again. To avoid soft locks, but also to make your level better in general, it's important to test your level a lot. You will often find pain points that are just too difficult, too boring, etc. Make sure to consider the difficulty of your level. There's space for levels of various difficulty levels, but if your level is extremely easy, it can be a bit boring. Also try to avoid huge difficulty spikes in an otherwise easy level. There is of course more functions to discover in the editor, but I hope this video has given you a good introduction to it. I hope you enjoy making levels with it and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day.